Today we will cover the topic uh, of sessions and flash messages. Yes, that is also a mm -hmm. part of this lecture. Um, one important thing to know is when working with HTTP, HTTP is stateless. Uh, that means that there is no built-in support for remembering uh, users and things like that built into HTTP. It, it's a, a, a really simple protocol. Uh, if we look at this example, uh, the client in this case, the browser, uh, uh, is sending a request to the server. It says, hi, I'm Ada Lovelace. Uh, and the server will respond with, hello, Ada. And then uh, the same client sends a new message back to the server uh, and the server will be like, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know who you are because there is no built-in uh, session management in, in HTTP. Uh, so this is something that, I mean, Depend de in every server course I've had, this is something we need to solve uh, always because sessions is a, such a fundamental part of of writing server applications. Uh, uh, being able to 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 like remember the user in some way to to, to uh, yeah. In in our case, we will use it for for flash messages. So we will get back to that. But but logging in the user. Is oh, also that's next le yeah. next lecture then. next lecture and that is a, a use case <laughs> that is something you you would probably need to implement on your site. Um, so what will we do and how how, how can we handle this? Uh, the most common way of, of handling state is by using cookies. Um, in this case, uh, the client once again says to the server, "Hello, I'm Ada Lovelace." Um, Instead of just responding to the server, the server will also, in this case, also send a cookie back to the client containing a um, unique identifier for this user, something that the, the server has created, this, uh, this session uh, ID. Um, sending it back to the client, the client will then store this cookie in the browser. Uh, uh, and the next time the client makes a request to the server, the, the browser will automatically include the cookie for that domain in the request to the server. So when the client once again connects and says, hi, it's me again, here's my session cookie. And the server will get that session cookie, it will uh, look at the identifier and depending on, I mean, we can do this in, in many different ways, but in this case, it, it looks in some kind of storage matches the, the ID of the uh, user uh, or of the client, looks in the uh, database and gets some information. In this case, it says name Ada in that case, so we know which user this is. Uh, so then the server knows, oh, this is Ada, and then I should handle the request this way, and I will send a response back to uh, the client. And that's a pretty simple system for handling. Uh, sessions. Uh, there are, I mean, what we need to remember is the only thing that distinguishes this, this client from other clients uh, is, is this session ID. So, so it's quite important that this session ID is, is kept secret between the server and the client. And how can we do that? There are, I mean, for, for the, the obvious way is to, to start using encryption mm -hmm. and using HTTPS and the, the SSL uh, layer upon uh, uh, HTTP um, to be able to encrypt all, all messages. Mm -hmm. uh, we will not, not look at that today. However, as soon as we start using sessions, uh, uh, handling passwords, things like that, mm -hmm. then we should always, always use HTTP. But that is we will get into that later on in the course. Um, of course, there are other ways of, 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 of fixing this problem with the session ID. Uh, we will look at, at, at some when we, we talk more in depth about security, uh, but we could, for instance, add 
uh, things like uh, sea surf um, uh, uh, protection and things like that to make this a little bit more safe and we have special cookies we can use as well but but in the, in its simplest form this is basically the model sending just an ID to the user and the user sends this ID back to the server to identify uh, itself um, As I said, this ID should be kept secret. Um, one common attack vector is, is trying to, to steal a cookie. Um, this can be done by using, if, if for those of you who has uh, done the lab with, uh, um, with a chat, um, if we are able to inject code in, 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 into the chat and, and, and the clients on the other side is rendering and executes this code, then we could actually just grab the cookie information and send this back using the, that chat to, to the attacker and the attacker can just provide it, it, their own cookie uh, to this server and that user, the, the attacker, will be logged in as if it were the, the ADA user in this case. Mm. And uh, that's a quite, at least some years ago, it was uh, still a really, really popular attack vector. It's probably doable today as well, but it's getting harder and harder with uh, some new techniques. Um, well, most sites use HTTPS, yeah. right? Yeah. Nowadays. But, but in that case, you can actually, that is, I mean, that attack you can pull off without, even if you have HTTPS, okay. HTTPS will not protect the endpoints. Um, so, 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 I mean, since, since, if we, if we are able to execute a script on the do same domain as the server, uh, uh, in this case, then that script will be able to read the cookies and everything. So HTTPS doesn't solve everything? Not everything. Nope. Just, just the, 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 the traffic between the client and okay. the server. Uh, however, then I, I guess that we need HTTPS to be able to add other security mechanisms mm -hmm. as well. So, so, so in, in, in one way, you should always always use HTTPS. Uh, we can uh, store, I mean, in this case, if we look at the server, in this case, it stores this session data in a local storage. Uh, and that is one way, uh, or in a session, session storage on some kind of session storage on the server that could be many, handled in many different ways. Um, so, Oh, yeah, in, in, in this one first, but using cookies is one thing of, of, of handling this session to the client. Uh, I mean, we could, as, as it says on the slide, store everything in the cookie. So instead of just providing an ID, we could store whatever information we need about this client mm -hmm. inside of that cookie. Uh, that is generally not a good ID uh, mm -hmm. because we can tamper with that, or the user can tamper with that data if it's not encrypted in any way. Um, so storing a lot of data in the cookie is probably not a good idea. It's better to store the data on the server side. Well, it, it not always we can do that. Uh, right? sorry. Because we will, uh, certain uh, application uses third party and then we will need a way to transfer that kind of information and then mm. we need to use the cookie to store much yeah. more than the ID. Yeah, and, right? and, and, and I guess that's where the JSON web tokens yeah. come, come into the picture as, as, as another way of, of like providing the data so it's stored at the client. Mm. Uh, there might be other, uh, other uh, 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 I, I forgot the word, but but uh, yeah, that that might might be needed in other cases as well. Mm. Um, yeah, we talked a little bit about uh, encryption. Uh, store, storing the cookie on, on 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 the server side, we can do this in many different ways. We can store it in in uh, in memory in the web server. Mm. Uh, that is probably the way we will do it in this course. And I think we will do it like that uh, in all the assignments as well. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if the assignment doesn't say anything else. Um, 
there is a problem, of course, with storing in memory. I mean, oh, it's, well, it's well. fast, it's, it's easy, yeah. uh, but as soon as the server restarts, for any uh, reason, uh, we will lose the, uh, the ses session information stored at the server. So, so when I talk about the ser session information on the server, it's this one. So, so the data that is connected to the session ID. Um, we will probably have a problem with scalability. Uh, we, we, we will <laughs> if we have, I mean, several different servers handling requests and and, and some kind of reverse proxy in the beginning that or, or load balancer that are like sending requests to different servers. If 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 this ADA user will be re, uh, redirected to another server and and the session information is stored on the, in the first server, then we need to synchronize that mm -hmm. in some way. So it's often better to. To, to, to have another solution for that. Uh, Redis is an in-memory data structure store that is quite commonly used yeah. to solve this. You can, of course, use a regular MongoDB, for instance, mm -hmm. to, to store the session data as well. Um, uh, uh, but we will not get into much too much of detail when it comes to load balancing and things like that. Oh. Next step is to take a look at uh, how we handle this and express them. Yep. Uh, so I mean, in whatever language, if you are use, if you are creating a PHP application, you will need to to handle session in 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 a similar way as we do in Express, as you mm. do in ASP.NET, MVC, or whatever. Uh, um, uh, so we will demonstrate, of course, in Express, since that is in the scope of this course. But you can do it in, in, in other ways on, on, on different systems. So let's have a look. We need to configure the, the session. We, we basically tell Express that, OK, so we want to use sessions. Yeah. Um, we need to, to use the package express, express session. Yeah. Uh, and then we configure uh, sessions, uh, or just a configuration object, mm -hmm. basically, for this session. And then we are using app.use and telling it that we have a session with those session options that we configured. Um, the name, uh, first of all, is the name of, of the cookie. Uh, we can see that in the in the browser. Uh, maybe I can do that actually, Let's see what I have on localhost. So, so now we can see all cookies that is set on, uh, in this case, rawgit.com, since this is the, um, in this case, it's the, um, uh, the domain that this presentation is, is uh, stemming from. Uh, maybe we could look actually at the to-do list. Let's see. Uh, oh, oh, application. I'm not sure if I have any cookies localhost on this port. Well, I have. Uh, name of uh, keyboard mm. cat, and that is uh, this example actually. So. Uh, we will, the cookie will get a name, uh, it will get a value. In this case, uh, the value will probably be the session ID. Uh, we have the domain localhost, uh, we have an expression, uh, expires date as well. Wh how long will this cookie uh, work or, or be active? And we can configure all of this in the configuration object. So the name was name of keyboard cat. Uh, we have a secret. Um, and this is used to, as it says, hash the session with HMAC. Mm -hmm. And I, um, this is your field maybe, but uh, uh, I guess that the session ID in this case is hashed. It's, is it that one right? The value will be hashed yeah. using that secret. Uh, so that is adding a, a bit of, of at least one layer of security. Uh, resave false. What is that? Don't remember that one. Well. No. Oh, okay. You, you, so for uh, every 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 time this, yeah. the the client contacts the server, the server will reset this cookie with a new exp expired date. Yes. Yep. Uh, save initialized. Don't save uh, created but not modified this session. Don't save a created but not modified session. So okay. just create a new ses session if it's needed. Yeah. 
So if you just do a, a get of a, of, a, of, a, of a resource of a page and no session is uh, required to start with, uh, no one will be created. Yeah, and that is probably a good thing if we, I mean, we, ha we haven't talked about a lot about regulations, but if we look at, uh, at the regulation and, and probably all of you are quite aware of all of the messages saying this site is using cookies, mm -hmm. da, 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 do you accept? And then you click accept. So maybe it's a, it's a good thing to not store a, a, a cookie on the client until the user has accepted this. Uh, and by having this false, then at least simple get request will not set that cookie. And that, that is probably a good thing. And then uh, we say set the max age for the cookie. In this case, it's one day. Well, um, you give that value in milliseconds. Yeah. Uh, that is actually quite a good way of writing it because yeah. it's really clear what it does. Um, I would argue that either your application would probably have a shorter expired date or a longer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because... Depends on the application. Yeah. If you are a bank application, you would probably not want the session to be longer than 15 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember, as long as the user is is using the application, the session time will be reset all the time. Mm -hmm. But if the user is inactive, then after five or 15 minutes, it will close down that session. And the user is logged out and need to log in again. And you probably all know this when you're using a bank, for instance. However, using like Facebook or YouTube or whatever, they kind of want their users to always be logged mm. in because it enhances the user's experience mm. and it provides more data for yeah. those tech mm. giants. So in their case, I think their session or leash time on, 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 on the cookies is like a, a year or something like that. Okay. So it's quite long, when okay. I, at, least, quite long at least yeah. when I looked at YouTube. So probably in, in that vicinity. Um, Yeah, uh, and in this case, if we are not doing anything, this session is stored in, in memory. And you should never do that in production, then you should add some kind of, of, of solid storage for, for the... But uh, it's good enough. It's good, again, good enough for now. I mean, it works the same way, so, so it's just another thing to add when we put this to production. Um, should we look at that? Uh, we have our application here. Uh, if we go to app.js, we will find the code for. We'll fix the to do if you noticed that in the last lecture. So, going. Where do we see session? Session. I saw something about the session. Ooh. Yep, session options. It's the same as we saw on that one. I would probably go ahead and do that. A month. One each month, okay. depending on how many days are in the month. Yeah, it says that. Yeah. It's, it's look at leash month. Uh, yeah, it says <laughs> one one each month. Um, and then we're just saying use this session and we are good to go. Yeah. Uh, if I, well, yeah, let's try it like this. So so if I understand, stood it correct, I, I clear, clear my mm -hmm. session. Uh, or clear the cookie. Now the user will not remember who I am anymore. I go into the application, no cookie is set. Nope. Because there is no need. Mm. Mm. Correct. If, if we have, were to have some kind of login and I logged in, then the, the cookie will show. We are in this application using the, uh, the session for showing those flash messages. Why? We will talk about this a little bit later, why that is. But to, to force a ses session, I can create something and we will get the flash message uh, and that will uh, 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 trigger us to save this cookie. So I'm Or if you uh, go back to the list. Okay. And or delete or edit. Well, we've been talking about sessions, right? Mm -hmm. We're nearly there. So just edit it and mark it as done. Ah, I need to edit it first, right? Yep. Update. Oops. We got a flash, f a flash mes message, and now we got a cookie. 
we got a cookie that says name of cat. Uh, we have some kind of value and we have an expir expires date that is probably a month from now or something like that. It doesn't it look like that though. Move. Did I change it? Or did, did I save it? It's tomorrow, it's still a day. I didn't save it. Stupid me. Then we can try if it will, if I only do that, will it reset that one if I just do that? No. Hmm. This is interesting. It's still tomorrow. We do an update on it. No. Yeah. It's update. Okay, so so it updates as well as, as uh, when you are interacting with mm -hmm. the session, not just doing the gets. That's good to know. Um, okay, I mean, if we want to store something in the session and 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 relate that to the user, we can use uh, the, uh, the the session uh, object on the request object. So when yep. we get a request from the client, we can use that request object dot session, and then we could add. Uh, properties mm -hmm. to the session object. Uh, we could, of course, add a, uh, a JSON uh, object or, or no. another object and yeah. whatever we like to, to this one. We don't need to, 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 to have it like string properties like that. Um, yeah, of course, we can read it back by doing the second line. Uh, we can Delete it by doing that. Oh yeah, the delete. I well, you can pinpoint a session variable and delete that. Yep. But keeping the session itself. Yeah. Okay. So we're just yeah we're removing the the the, the, name. the, the name from from uh, or the, this property from that object. Yes. So the lead is doing that. We I I I'm so rarely using delete, so I get a little bit confused. But but of course you can do that by by doing that. You can destroy the session, then it will destroy the session for this user. Yeah. Uh, Very and, handy when you're logging out the user. Yeah, for instance, is it removing it as well? The cookie. Ooh, not sure about that. No, but I think so. Try that one. You can regenerate. I guess that. Well, triggers a uh, oh. um, regeneration, and you will get a new date. For instance, if, if well, well, you get a new ID. Yeah, even that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can discuss that in more detail when we come to security, because that could be a good thing to do yeah. uh, every now and then. <laughs> if 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 that session ID is on on the on the, in the wrong hands, generating it all the time will make it a so lot harder. It's to a do common like that. Com it, it's a common thing to do when you log in. Yep. a user. Yep. Um, okay, let's see uh, how we what we will need this for. But first of all, we will. Forget about the sessions for just a minute. We will talk about something else. Mm. And this is, you are always making fun of me for my uh, phone um, <laughs> uh, phone uh, trouble I got in. Mm. I, I was ordering a phone from an online uh, uh, store. Uh, it was just on the release day, so, so it was quite a lot of pressure on that server. Um, I got the order form and I pressed order. And nothing happened for like five minutes or something like that. And then, oh my God, I tried it again. So I clicked order once again. 30 seconds later, it says confirmed. Your order is passed through. And I was happy. I got two phones. Uh, because well, it's, it's not your fault. Bad programmer. Yeah, yeah, in that case. And it was actually one of the bigger IT companies in Sweden that had this site. Uh, so. What happened? Well, the first request actually went through, but I, as a user, would, didn't get a response back. So I pressed it once again, and I sent yet another re uh, a request to the server. And in that case, it, it could show me this, uh, this message, a confirmation message. Uh, you have probably done this uh, as well. I mean, if you are filling, in, filling out the form and pressing send, and if it says successful, we have stored your information. And then if you reload the page, you will notice you will get a get a some kind of prompt saying, "Are you really sure you want to send this form information mm -hmm. once again?" And you will probably click, "Oh no, 
sorry and you will click no and you will kind of copy the URL and, and uh, press enter and then you will load the page because you, that will force a get. The reload after you have done a post will reload the post. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but triggering it from the URL field will always trigger a get instead. Um, so, what is happening in, when we have a problem? Well, the user fills in the form. I think we borrowed this picture from Wikipedia. Yes, um, it's borrowed that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the user fills in the form. It's uh, clicking uh, the submit. It will do a post to our server. We will handle this and we will return a 200 to the client. If the client just reloads the page, it will send the same form data with a post to the server and we will be in the loop. Yeah. As soon as the user is reloading, we are pushing in data, probably to a database somewhere. It's identical data, since, since, since it's coming from, from this exact same cli client with the same, exact same data. However, it will get unique IDs in the database mm -hmm. if we're using Mongo's, for instance. Um, but this mm -hmm. is not a good practice. No, it's, the, the, it's this, yes, it's, it's called double posting. Yeah. Uh, of course, we can try to avoid this by, by on the client when we have a submit button, for instance. As soon as that one is clicked, we can disable it. Yeah. Then you, you're not able to click the button. That had saved my experience with the phones mm -hmm. because I yeah. wouldn't be able to click that but button can, once again. But you can still reload the page. You can still reload the page. So that will not help for that. So, so, so we have a, quite a good practice of, of how to solve this is the PRD pattern, uh, post redirect get. And uh, we will look at this use case instead. So the user fills out the form, click submit, and it will post to the server. The server will then, instead of answering with a 200 that everything is okay, it will send a redirect directive to the browser using a 30x something <laughs> code. Uh, I tried to read up on this, and, and I, I think that the correct uh, code you sh should send, at least as, as when you're using HTTP 1.1, and, and we are uh, using at least that version, then it's a 303. I mm. think Express, but this, Express is yeah, 302. 302. But you, you can use either one of them, as I, as I uh, interpreted the, the, the standard. So we are sending a 303 back to the client. And that is basically saying, okay, everything is fine. Now you should load this page instead. And then the client will have some information about which page to load and it will do a get from the server on the page that the server redirected to. And you, that page will send the 200, of course, back to the client. And if the client refreshes the page, it will refresh the get. Yeah. And we can look at this in action in, in our application. Uh, I think we should actually have this one there and we could go to the network like that. So we will go to create. Okay, um, in this one we are in create. We get, got a 304 and that is probably because it's, um, let's force it to reload. It was cached in, in the mm. browser. But now, now we get a create 200 instead. Okay. Enter your description here. Trying out PRG. Save. Now we need to look at what's happening. So we got a, the create said 302 found or 303 under. Mm. That depends. If we. What did I do? Sorry. If we click that one, we can see that the request URL was uh, to this create. We did a post. The status code we got back was 302, uh, and in the response headers, let's see if it says something about where to redirect. Does it do that? There, refer, origin, refer, create, it came from that. Uh, oh, you're in the way. Yeah. I thought it should say that you should redirect to the to-do. Somewhere it needs to do that. Where is that? I thought we could see it in the the requests, the response header. There is the response header. Uh, 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 location, just a dot. Okay. Well, view source instead. No. Hmm. Strange. 
you can at least see that the cookie is here as well. Um, oh, I'm unsure how it will know where to redirect to then. Because you, you can see that the next the next thing that the browser does is it makes a get request to the to do oh. application. Dish. But go back to the condition location, isn't it location? Yeah, but it only says dot. Yeah. Index. Ah, yeah, index of that, of course. So 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 create is under to do and, and just the dot says okay the index folder yeah. uh, of that one, which is to do. So so okay, that is correct. Um, so the the browser do, does a reload on the two hundred uh, uh, on on the to do, and we we get this list view. If I reload, well, the, if if you look at to well, no, you can't. Uh, I can do that again. Mm -hmm. Yep. And if we look at to do now, uh, if you double click to do, well, in in in, in the name. No, oh, okay. No, not double click. Just click. Okay. So that one. Well, we see that the request method is get. Yeah. So it is a get uh, and. Uh, We can, I mean, that means that we can reload this one. And if I reload it, it will just do that and, uh, and again and, and again. And the flash message disappears. Yeah. So um, we, we got a problem, Houston. <laughs> how we do? do? <laughs> well, well yeah, not in this application, no. but, but how do we fix the, the flash message? Um, not sure what you are, are, are referring to, but we, but of course we have a problem in that I mean, since we are doing a redirect in this case, mm -hmm. we are posting to the server, and the server tells the client to do a redirect. If we were to, 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 to in the first response from the server, sending an, a message to the client saying, everything is fine, you can show this message to the client, we cannot because the, the, the client, will immediate, client will immediately get another page from the server, mm -hmm. and the server has no ID because it has forgotten W which this which one is this user? Yeah, so, so that so is so why we need to use sessions for yeah, flash so messages. No, yeah, so, so so it needs to to remember the message to send to the user when when the user uh, or when the web browser uh, gets the page yep, yep. to show. Yeah. Um, so let's do let's talk a little bit about what what is a flash message. Well, a flash message is a uh, message that we show to the user, and that is built into the session handling of Express, or is it built into Express? Uh, we will take a look. At yeah, it. we will look at that in, when we look at the code. Uh, so what is happening? Well, we are posting uh, to, to the server something, in this case a delete. The server responds with a 302 found on the location to do, as we saw, and the client creates a get back to the server and gets the message back. But the problem is that the server remembers up here on the two first arrows, it remembers that it deleted this object. When the another get is, is uh, received by the server, it has forgotten what happened mm -hmm. before. Uh, and it cannot know that something went well or went wrong when deleting this object. So we need a session to store this uh, information in. Um, I would argue that you should try to, I mean, always use this kind of, of, of messages to the client when something goes wrong and even when something goes okay, so, so that the user knows that, okay, my action was well received. I mean, it's not, not sure, certain that you need to show a message looking like this. Of course, you could like make the row in the to-do list green and then it fades out or something Ooh. like that. But there is a problem if that is a long way down, so it's out of the user's reach. But in some way, you should at least think about making it so that the user understands that something has happened that is mm -hmm. good. There are people that argue that uh, you should never be able to to uh, to, to close uh, this kind of messages. Yeah, sometimes you see a little X and you can yeah, close it. Yeah. Uh, why why well, shouldn't well, well, we be but, able but, but to do not, that? But not automatically. Okay. Mm. Mm. Well, one of those people are you. 
Yeah, maybe I have written <laughs> something about that somewhere. I, I don't remember. That was that really reason. many years ago. So I, yeah, may, maybe it's a good idea to, to, to like show that this message is still. I mean, this is is recently added or something mm. like that. Uh, depends so much about yeah. on the application yeah, yeah, that you are writing as well. So. Okay, so how do we implement this? It's pretty simple since it's built in. Uh, so it is a, a part of the uh, session uh, package or session module. Uh, on the session, we can uh, create a flash. Um, this is actually just another property that we are creating. It's, yeah, it's not, not a built-in thing. It's nope. something we have kind of invented. But Well, we're creating a property anyway on the session and we uh, just add type, success, text, and some kind of text. Oh, we add an, a reference to an object, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a reference to an object in, in yeah. Uh, and then we do the redirect, and here is the dot. If it if it were to say uh, dot slash to do dot dot slash to do or something like that, then we have would have seen that in the browser. Now it only says dot, so that was what I missed. But yeah. this is good. I mean. We, well, we if, if, you, if you put a slash there instead, you will be go, going to, to the root, 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 root of the application. Yeah, yeah. But basically it says send a response, response uh, redirect to the browser. The next time uh, the user will come back to this application, uh, we can uh, look at... Well, yeah, it, it's, what happens is that you transfer the information in the uh, session uh, to the response objects, yep. and you place it in the locals. That's and now we come to what's, mm -hmm. why it's important. We we named uh, uh, the the property regarding the the, the content the of view the view data. Yeah. View data. yeah. Uh, so so we are separating. I mean, we, when we get data, we were preparing data in the control for the view. We are calling that view data. When we are setting other data for the application, in this case a flash message, we are calling it local. We or are we are using the local. We are using the locals and call it flash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we call it view data in, in, yeah. in, 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 when we are preparing that. In, and in this case it means that we can, can get this information in the view. So, so when the view is rendering, we can fetch the information from response.locals.flash. So we can test if, do we have some flash message on the local. If we don't, just ignore it. If we have, we can add a class depending on if it's a good message or a bad message. Mm -hmm. uh, we can have red or green in that case. And we add the text to this one. So it's pretty simple. Um, should we well, look in? <laughs> it's pretty simple, you say, but, but <laughs> easy peasy, strike through. <laughs> well, it's quite complicated. But presented like this, it's easy. <laughs> it's easy, yeah, to do like, yeah, yeah, maybe. But 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 I mean, we are getting a lot of help yeah. with a, with a, with yes. the framework in this case, just being able to, to add it to locals and, and and then read it wherever we want it in the application. In this case, in the view. Um, yeah, should we look at? I mean, it's hard to see in this picture, maybe. Uh, we can look in a view. Should we look in the to-do view? It's the probably the index view, right? Uh, since this is where we list everything. Uh, it's not. Is it in a well, uh, layout? That. Is it in a partial? Well, take a look at the layouts, I think, to start with. Yeah. And in default, we can see that we're using uh, partial views. Yeah, and we are mm -hmm. using a flash partial mm -hmm. view. And it's integrated yeah. like that. So so every page has this flash message, which yes. could be a good thing. We don't need to think about that, which views needs flash messages and, and which one don't. So so we are always, I mean, we, we are still having the if flash. So. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are preparing that. Are we doing that in app.js? Preparing and copying the flash message. Yes, we are here. So app.use, request, response, next, and uh, in this case we have done it with a test as well, so, yeah. so, so it doesn't break. But uh, So if we have flash defined on the session from the client, or 
well, in the session that was read when the client uh, connected with its ID. Uh, then we're copying that flash message back to locals and then we are deleting it from uh, the session. So, it's, so otherwise it will be, be there for every each and yeah. every request. So this is, should only survive the round trip, yes. Yeah. And when we delete uh, request session flash, the value of it would be, if we request it once again, will be undefined. Yeah. Um, we are setting this in the controller. Uh, when we delete something, we are telling, okay, create a flash on the session and... and it can scroll up a bit. A bit? How much? Well, just a little bit. Uh -huh. That? So, fine. Create a post. If it was a success, we... we, we pro Basically, we're saying this will probably be a success. Uh, oh, well, we have already... So, uh, we have managed to save without yeah. throwing an ex exception. So, well, we are saying everything was fine, redirect to dot. Otherwise, if, if something is throwing an error, some kind of problem has occurred and we are actually showing the error message uh, in this case. And, and you can discuss this as well. Well, maybe that error message will tell us something about the application, but that depends on how we implemented the save. So, well, yeah. yeah. But yeah, that is flash messages. Nothing more to say about that. I mean, nope. it's, it's, it's quite an easy process to follow. So this is the last thing about, about this uh, uh, bit. What we haven't talked about in this the module with uh, uh, data persistency is, is uh, for instance, how to implement um, more like child uh, child schemas mm. and things like that. There is a recording on the course web page. You please take a look at that one. Um, next time we will start talking about web security and access control and access control. Uh, how to log in the user basically and and, and to authorize the user for certain uh, uh, resources in the application. But uh, see you then. Bye. Bye.